Um, good morning. Thank you for coming to our celebration here to recognize the start of construction for the Interstate 80 Yerba Buena Island uh, Ramps Project. My name is Eric Cordoba. I have the privilege of being the, the uh, project manager for the San Francisco County Transportation Authority. Frankly, I've been living and breathing this for the last five, six years, and it's an exciting day for me and for everybody here. You know, this project, like all, has a timeline. It's, uh, there's a program in the back that gives an outline of the timeline, but I really want to do it more justice and talk about the people that have helped make this a reality. In particular, it started back in 2007, you know, efforts spearheaded by Jose Luis Moscovich, our former executive director, Michael Cohen, um, and staff to go ahead and, and obtain federal and state funding for the project inclusion uh, in Senate Bill 163. Thank you for your efforts. Over the years, we've ha had to go through and uh, deal with uh, lots of different process approvals. Back in that 2007 time frame, um, the person that really led that effort, frankly, was Jack Silvan, assisted by uh, Luis Zuranaga in the early days in 2007. And I've had the pleasure of working with Jack for many years through uh, those first couple years. Uh, in terms of process, you get a planning approval with the state of California. It's called the Project Study Report. Uh, we got that in December 2007. That allowed us to go ahead and start the environmental documentation process and to get it approved by in December of 2011. So in about a three-year period, we went ahead and got environmental approval for a significant project, which uh, we were all very happy for. I want to give special thanks to people that led that effort, in particular people like David Reel from AECOM, um, and his staff, uh, uh, Susan, and then also from Caltrans, Melanie Brent and Maureen Murphy from Caltrans. They were instrumental in us getting the environmental approval. And as, as you all know, getting an environmental approval can take some time. Um, after we went ahead and got environmental approval, we went through our design efforts. And, um, you know, that takes a couple years, too. Over 2,000 plan sheets and specifications go into producing a project like this for, uh, for advertisement and bid. Special thanks to Corey Lang and Sam Chewy with AECOM, who've been working uh, for many years, in particular Sam, he's, been, he's work, been working on this since the early years back in 2007 also. We were lucky enough to get approvals um, for right-of-way certification, and, and I, uh, uh, for a lot of you that don't know a lot about right-of-way certification, it's the part that the engineers don't really know a lot about, because it deals with the real estate end of it. Um, so we hire experts, and we hired experts from a firm called Associated Right-of-Way Services, people like Bill Tannenbaum, Jim Richards, and Mark Rickards, who led the effort of preparing the appropriate documentation for what's called a federal land transfer. Bottom line, federal land transfer means a transfer of land from the federal government to a local agency, and that's what we did. And we got a lot of help from Caltrans in that regard also, from Julie McDaniel, Linda Mazaday, Mark Schindler as well as support from the legal staff. Stan Taylor here from the Transportation Authority and his staff, as well as the legal staff from the Navy and TIDA. Um, not sure you're aware of the fact, but the Coast Guard has, uh, has a base here. And in a lot of respects, they own the island. And uh, we've been working with the Coast Guard for the last few years. I want to recognize them, in particular Greg Rescio, for his efforts in helping us obtain the appropriate license agreement with the Coast Guard because to be able to perform construction activity out here, you need to get those appropriate license agreements. And that's all part of the, the right-of-way certification effort. We got to a point by July of 2013 where we got the construction funding uh, approved and allocated, which for us was a very happy day, just like today. We started advertisement in September of 2013, had a bid opening in November, and awarded the construction contract to Golden State Bridge who is here today. We're happy to be in partnership with them to go ahead and construct this project. Going through the advertisement process, and I just want to recognize the construction management team that's going to lead our effort here for the Transportation Authority. Parsons Brinkerhoff, Bart Lytell, and Mike Scott, they're here in the audience today. They're going to be managing the efforts and overseeing the team from Golden State and all of the subcontractors who we're happy to have here. Very happy to see that our DBE goals were met and exceeded. Special thanks to Pendergast Consulting, uh, in particular Paul, Paul Pendergast. Everything you see here has been arranged and properly coordinated through Paul here, who's in the background there. Thank you, Paul. And his staff, Curtis Lock, Linskog, and also Barbary Coast staff. I appreciate uh, all the effort here in terms of um, all the hard work over the last week or so in particular. 
Now I want to get to um, acknowledge some very special people here, the Treasure Island Development Team. Bob Beck here is now working as new project director. I've had the pleasure of working with him now for about six months plus. His staff, people like Peter Somerville, Rich Rivetti, and then some of the former Titus staff, Office of um, Economic Workforce and Development, Michael Timoff, Kelly Pretzer, Alex Galevich, Kay Locke, Stephen Proud, Jay Wallace, and Eileen Goodwin, they were all part of the effort in terms of us coming together as locals to, to, to work and strategize on how to get the approvals in an expedited manner and to keep this project in high visibility in terms of uh, obtaining the funding. Finally, you know, a sincere thank you to Caltrans and FHWA. We had so many Caltrans staff work on the job. Jack Shaw is the project manager. Worked with him for the last five years. He works under the direction of Ken Terpstra. Thank you both for uh, working with me in a, in a manner that really, frankly, was his best a project management team I've ever worked with. Greg Coley from FHWA is here. He was a big supporter of the project. At the end of the day, this project is about 90% funded with uh, FHWA federal funds. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a number of key individuals you'll hear from this morning behind me, and but I do want to, let's talk a little bit of trivia here in history since we're talking about the project. I want to talk about the history here of the island itself, in particular the name of the island. I don't know if you knew this or not, but this island had very uh, interesting naming history. It was called Seabird Island, Wood Island, and even Goat Island, if you can, if you can uh, imagine that. Um, during the gold rush days, I guess the gold rushers brought a bunch, of, a bunch of goats to the island, and that's why they called it that. Thank goodness it was changed back to Yerba Buena Island in June of uh, 1931. Um, the island is named after the town of Yerba Buena, which was the original name of San Francisco when it was founded in 1776. The connection to the past is important, but the connection to the future is more important, a lot more important, and the other speakers are going are gonna to discuss that. And I have the pleasure of introducing you know, our first speaker today, who is going to be the MC for the event. Tilly Chang serves as the Executive Director of the San Francisco County Transportation Authority. Transportation Authority administers, administers the local transportation sales tax, Prop K, and they're also the congestion management agency for San Francisco. So uh, please join me in welcoming Tilly Chang. Thank you very much, Eric. I need to grow a couple feet for this job. <laughs> Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Eric, for your opening remarks and for sharing the history of this fantastic project. Um, you and our Deputy Capital Projects Director, Lee Saga, have done some magic uh, leading our project team and the extended partnerships on this project. The extended team has made an, ex an incredibly smooth and rapid progress for this project, um, especially given its size and complexity. So I want to recognize your hard work and accomplishments in bringing us to this day. Let's give Eric and his team a round of applause. And let's thank Paul Pendergast for ordering up this fantastic weather. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and your team for really helping us with the, uh, a beautiful event today. So good morning, everyone. On behalf of uh, the Transportation Authority and our partners at Caltrans and TIDA, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you to our commencement ceremony and to thank you for taking the time to join us in our celebrations. I don't know how it is that someone who had the least to do with developing this project gets to have the honor of presiding over a happy occasion like this, but I feel very fortunate to be here, uh, and I'm privileged to do the honors. Before I begin, I'd also like to recognize several special guests who are with us today. Uh, from Leader Pelosi's office, we have Sinead Darty. Uh, Sinead, we thank you very much for being here and for working with our team. We also deeply appreciate Leader Pelosi's longstanding support for this project and her help in securing the critical federal highway bridge funds that anchored our funding plan. Um, he's not here today, but Caltrans Director Darty, I'd like to very much thank him and recognize his support and the state's support in the $9 million of state Prop 1B bridge seismic retrofit funds. Uh, these were not easy to come by, and we really want to thank Caltrans. Um, and of course, Dir District 4 Director Bijan Sartipi is here representing Caltrans today. We'll hear from Bijan later, but thank you, Bijan and Dan and the team from Caltrans District 4 as well. From the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, I believe, I'm not sure if Randy Rentschler is here um, and Andy Vermeer, we really want to recognize their partnership, of course, along with Caltrans. 
allowing us to hook into this beautiful and graceful structure uh, known as the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. And from TIDA, um, we have the honor of having Linda Richardson, the president of the board of TIDA here with us as well, who we will also hear from in a bit. Um, and of course, I see current and past uh, project directors, as uh, um, Eric mentioned. We have Jack Sylvan, who took the ball, uh, along with Michael Cohen in the beginning from those early days with Jose Luis and Michael Cohen trying to figure out how to make this project work. And Jack, you've really led us through the entire development project process um, so ably in handing it off to Michael Timoff after you and now Bob Beck. We're really, really lucky to have worked with such a strong team at TIDA. Now from the Treasure Island Development Corporation, I think we also um, have Kay Locke and Alex Galovich, who we've also been working with on a sister project that some of you may not, may not know about. The Treasure Island Development Project also includes a very innovative transportation management program that the Transportation Authority will be very pleased and fortunate to be working to help deliver. And from my tra uh, Transportation Authority Board, of course, we have our Chair John Avalos, the Supervisor of District 11, uh, representing the Outer Mission and Excelsior. And Commissioner Jane Kim, unfortunately, couldn't be here. She had to leave early to attend the California Democratic um, co Conference and Convention. But we do, of course, have Sunny, uh, uh, Sunny Angulo from the office of Supervisor Jane Kim, representing Treasure Island and District 6. So thank you, Sunny, for being here. I'd also like to recognize a few other folks who were unable to be here. We're very grateful to Senator Feinstein, who led her, lent her support to this project at critical points, along with Senator Mark Leno and Assembly Member Fiona Ma. The project was also fortunate to have the support of Governors Schwarzenegger and Brown and Caltrans Directors Kempton uh, and, and others in the past who helped us move through the entire federal aid and project development process. And we do, of course, thank the CTC for its coordination with us and support to this project. Finally, the mayors, Lee, Newsom, and Tida, past and present board members, as well as members of the Board of Supervisors, past and present, deserve our thanks for their sustained support of the project and the overall Treasure Island development effort. Finally, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank in abstention Jose Luis Moscovich, our former executive director, who along again with Michael Cohen, the former director of the OEWD, were the original sponsors and champions of, of this project. Because of their and your efforts, we are here to celebrate the YVI Westbound Ramps Project, also known as the East uh, Side Ramps Projects. So as a community-wide accomplishment, we recognize that this connection to the future could not have been made possible with all, without all the help of all the people in, in this uh, beautiful event. As with most projects um, of this scale these days, this project was a product of a host of partnerships from the design and the funding perspectives. Our next few speakers will talk about the role and the importance of the project, so I won't go on, and the partnerships that made it possible. These include the collaborations with Caltrans, the Treasure Island Development Authority, Federal Highways Administration, and our local Treasure Island community members as well. The YBI East Ramp, the East Side Pro Ramps Project is a $50 million infrastructure project that is, of course, part of an overall a larger $100 million full interchange project that will greatly enhance the safety and the economic development prospects for Treasure Island. The project will replace the aging structures while facilitating the development of the island as a model of sustainable growth in the region. And we're also ensuring that the ramps are a graceful addition to the beautiful Bay Bridge project that we opened recently. And with the initial investment of the $50 million of this project, we're pleased to be sustaining and creating 1,400 jobs in our local economy. And suffice it to say, it's a proud day for us here at the Transportation Authority and for our partners at Caltrans and Tida as well. I'd also, of course, like to express our appreciation for the hardworking folks who will actually get the job done. Our contractor for these uh, Yerba Buena ramp projects are the Golden, St Golden State Bridge <coughs> Project team. Uh, CEO Dave Riccatello uh, couldn't be here today, but we're happy to have Brian Stoppard representing uh, Golden State Bridge. Thank you very much for being here, Brian, and for your leadership on this project. Uh, the Golden State Bridge team will construct the new uh, ramps connecting the east side of Yerba Buena Island to the east span of the San Francisco uh, Bay Bridge. And we've been on time and under budget through the environmental planning and design phases of this project. I'm confident they'll continue the tradition through construction as well. We're additionally thrilled and grateful that the Golden State Bridge Company has pledged to exceed the project contract's disadvantaged business enterprise goal. We want to thank them for being a model of excellence in business leadership in this respect and for truly supporting our small businesses. We look forward to hearing from one of their DBE team members um, later in the program as well. 
by the way, I understand that all of these rigs and trucks, if you see over here in the parking lot, were brought by one or more of our DBE firms. So thank you so much for, for that. Um, Clifton Birch, appear, of course, here is with Empire Engineering, and many of you as well are here on the DBE uh, side of the house. Thank you so much. Um, what an e this, is, this is what economic development really looks like. So thank you. And, and Paul, I don't know if there's any way to keep all of this machinery here until after school lets out, because I think my four and seven-year-olds and a whole bunch of other kids would be ecstatic to check it out. I think it really brings out the kid in, in all of us. Um, it's, it's quite awesome. So now, without further ado, let me introduce a true champion of working people and community development, our leader at the Transportation Authority, and a dad himself, Supervisor John Avalos. Thank you, Tilly. Um, it's really great to be here. I, I live in a, a landlocked district of San Francisco, the Excelsior District. Uh, we don't see water anywhere. We get to the top of the hill in McLaren Park and we can see the bay. Uh, but it's truly, truly dramatic uh, scenery here to see the city, to see the new bridge, to see your way on island where we'll see the ramps go up, to see the equipment that's here that will be doing the work with the people who are working to build the ramps. It's an amazing sight to see how this area will be transformed uh, from what it has been in the past to what it'll be in the future. As chair of the Transportation Authority, I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, I want to thank you for all of your efforts so far in bringing this project to fruition. Uh, it still has a ways to go, but I'm really happy uh, to know that we are on target, as I'll discuss a little bit later. Uh, the construction of the westbound ramp signifies more than the construction of this particular project. It represents the first major infrastructure improvement to Tida's planned redevelopment of Yerba Buena Island. Seventeen years ago, the U.S. Navy closed its base here, and since then, we have all worked together to approve a responsible and thoughtful plan for future growth that will meet the considerable needs of this area and our city as a whole. Future plans we at the Board of Supervisors approve include building housing for 20,000 residents, retail and service development, as well as new and upgraded roads and infrastructure, including a new ferry terminal and expanded bus services. This development will greatly expand the number of residents that are able to live here and have access to the islands. There is a planned transportation hub that is slated to be a 15-minute walk for 90% of the future population of the island. And getting around and spending time here will be much different than it is today with bus, bike sharing, ferry, on island shuttle services, and so on. We are proud that the Treasure Island Development uh, Project will be a model for sustainable planning for, city, for the city and the region and beyond. The Transportation Authority, along with many partners, uh, including the Treasure Island Development Authority, Caltrans, the Federal Highway Administration, and the Office of Economic and Workforce Development have all come together to get us, this, get us to this point. And it is because of this collaborative effort that we are on schedule to meet our targeted construction completion date for the summer of 2016. I thank the staffs of all the agencies and especially our ABLE project manager, Eric Cordoba, uh, and the former executive director, Jose Luis Moscovich, for their leadership and for getting the job done, uh, done well with sensitivity to the environment and in partnership with the community. These westbound ramps will provide much needed safety and access and improvements on the island and act as an impetus to increasing connections with our neighborhoods from across the bay. And as we create connections with these ramps, we also create jobs. I'm, I am proud that we are creating prevailing wage jobs for local San Francisco companies and residents with these investments. I want to recognize the Golden State Bridge Company, who are our prime contractors, and thank them for the 12% uh, DBE commitment they have made on this project. So thank you all for, again, for being here. I'm really happy to be working with the Transportation Authority staff and 
and my, my colleagues to make sure we have funding for these projects to go forward, to making sure that we are delivering this project on time. And I want to thank all the outstanding staff for uh, their work. Uh, we are seeing a uh, great connection between the East Bay, Yerba Buena Island, uh, San Francisco, and, and uh, Yerba Buena and Treasure Island. Uh, it's something that the future generations will look to as a marvel of uh, political engineering and social achievement. Thank you so much. Project delivery, not only here at the Transportation Authority, but across all of our sponsor well, agencies. Uh, now it's my pleasure to welcome Sunny Angulo, who represents Supervisor Jane Ch Kim's it's, office, uh, uh, District 6 Supervisor for representing ago. Treasure Island and the south of Market area. Supervisor has, Kim has made transportation safety and creating livable, vibrant, and inclusive neighborhoods one of her top priorities. Welcome, Sunny. And thanks also to uh, Commissioner uh, Avalos for not just your leadership uh, on this project, but also on transportation issues across the city. It's been, it's been wonderful to work with your office. Um, again, my apologies that Supervisor Kim isn't able to join us herself this morning, but on behalf of the District 6 office, I'd like to welcome you to the easternmost neighborhood of San Francisco. Uh, this is a neighborhood that actually, when I first uh, started working with Supervisor Kim when she was, after she was inaugurated in 2011, was one of my work areas. And this community is, is just an incredibly uh, vibrant, dynamic, and diverse uh, neighborhood that um, I think a lot of San Franciscans often forget even exists here. People often tell me uh, that they're shocked when I tell them that there's uh, thousands of residents that live on Treasure, Treasure Island and Yerba Buena Island, but it's an incredible community. Um, and as I'm sure you experienced on your way over here, the Yerba Buena and Treasure Island neighborhood can actually be somewhat of a challenge to access. Um, like I said, over 2,500 Treasure Island residents and Yerba Buena residents depend on reliable transit infrastructure to access everything from jobs, their schools, services, and even shopping. Um, and that also includes even within the islands themselves. One of Supervisor Kim's first pieces of legislation after taking office was to pass the Treasure Island Development Plan in order to redevelop the 404 acres of Treasure Island within, with uh, infrastructure that is uh, necessary for this growing community. That's why it is very exciting to stand with you this morning after years of visioning and planning for the commencement of another critical piece of Treasure Island's evolution, the Yerba Buena westbound ramps. Through the leadership of the TIDA and the SFCTA, in partnership with Caltrans and FHAWA, we are making this vision a reality. The 180 Interchange Improvement Project, which includes the construction of the westbound ramp we are commencing today, is creating a safer and more accessible San Francisco for all our residents, including the thousands of middle and low income San Franciscans who will soon have the opportunity to live here. Our office is extremely excited to see one of our favorite neighborhoods receive the investment and really the care that it deserves. As Chair Avalos mentioned, the island under the approved plans will be home to almost 20,000 new residents over the next several decades, with 25% of those homes being affordable below market rate units. The next step is providing equally world-class transportation options, which the SFCTA is also helping us to carry out through their role as the designated Treasure Island Mobility Management Agency. I want to thank uh, former uh, TIDA project manager Michael Timoff, who was actually one of the people that our office worked closely with when we first came into office in 2011. Um, and of course, Director Tilly Chang and her incredible team at the Transportation Authority, as well as the rest of the city, state, and federal agencies that partnered so well um, in coordinating on this actually very extremely complicated, as you heard, um, project. And I, you know, I know it was probably difficult for a lot of our community members to come out, but we have a tremendous amount of nonprofits that also exist out here on the island. And our office regularly convenes uh, everything from pedestrian safety to transportation meetings, um, including out here on the island. And so their input and their feedback was absolutely integral to moving forward on this project. So thank you all for being here today. And thank you, Tilly, for helping to organize it. Uh, to really in, in, enable the community involvement and engagement that this project deserves and benefited from. Thank you so much for your leadership. 
So our theme for today's event, building, the connections to, building our connections to the future, would never have been possible without the dynamic leader of the Treasure Island Development Authority, uh, which is known as TIDA. And of course, we appreciate very much their capable staff, um, who we've mentioned again, include Bob Beck, before him, Michael Timoff, and Jack Sylvan. The Transportation Authority and TIDA have long, have long partnered collaboratively on numerous projects to support the overall development project, and I'm delighted to welcome the President of the Treasure Island Development Agency's Board of Directors, Ms. Linda Fadeke Richardson. I first had the pleasure um, of working with President Richardson in her capacity as the chair of the Bayview Project Area Committee Land Use and Transportation Commission, um, and I have since come to know her as a deeply committed civic leader on a number of economic development issues and community-based projects citywide. Please join me in welcoming President of the Board of TIDA, Ms. Linda Fadeke Richardson. Thank you for the uh, gracious uh, introduction. I'm glad to be here today and um, I'm looking in the room and I can see many folks that for the last 25 years I've had the privilege of working with on numerous uh, projects in uh, San Francisco. But before I start, it's always great I know that the former staff and entities that were involved with this project were mentioned I also want to take um, an opportunity to welcome Michael Timoff. I've spoken about you a lot, and thank you again for uh, your presence. I see Mr. Jay Wallace down there, one of the people that we count on when we need to get things done. And thank you, uh, Paul Pendergast, a longtime friend, for putting all this together. Anytime your name is on anything, we know it's going to get done well. As the president of Treasure Island, as the caretaker, and as someone that is working with all the other city agencies, with all of them, I think last year something happened when Supervisor John Avalos and his fellow commissioners uh, nominated uh, Tilly Chang to be the director of the County Transportation Agency. About Tilly, I think before the appointment, people, there were all these discussions going on in the city as to what is going to be the next focus and what is going to be uh, the future of Treasure Island. Who is going to help us to put all these things uh, together? Tilly was brought in, and I think it was a great decision. We were looking for someone that had the broad uh, picture that understands our transportation on the regional level. It's not just only to plan within the city and San Francisco. You have to look at the boundaries. Getting in and out of Treasure Island is the key to the overall development of here. Transport, effective transportation planning is an economic engine. And so bringing the team in place is what we were looking into. And to, to top that, Mayor Lee brought Mr. Bob Beck, who you've heard about. For us, one of the challenges this year is, is for us to make all the critical milestones in order for us to begin the, the development that has long been anticipated for the last 20 something years. So Bob Beck is already on board and we've already had a successful uh, milestones that were already accomplished. At the end of this year, you are going to see us even make breaking ground or trying to work with the Navy to complete the cleanup and the transfer of this island. I'm honored to serve as the president of the Treasure Island Development and my fellow board of directors. We work with Supervisor Jane Kim, who has represented this island very well. We work with the staff. When we need something to be done, we rely on the board of supervisors. And so far, each and every one of them, when we call upon them, have ensured that with our budget and all the information and things and the resources we need are in place. So moving forward, for you, our stakeholders, for the city and county of San Francisco, for the residents of the island, you can read be sure that we have a team in place that is not only looking at the residents and the daily operations of what is going on here. In addition, moving the development of the island forward to making this not only a sustainable development, but one of the finest in the entire 
country of the United States of America. That is the goal of the Yerba Buena and Treasure Island uh, development. And as I mentioned, before the end of this year, we anticipate the cleanup, the completion of the cleanup from, and the transfer of the island to the Navy. Every now and then you hear about some of the negative news about Treasure Island. It, well, sometimes you suspect that it's a huge development. So our goal and the burden we have is to communicate with the public to make sure that the right information, the correct information, is being disseminated to the public. We rely on all the stakeholders, on the Navy, on the regulatory agencies of which we have the California Department of Toxins and Control, the San Francisco Department of Public Health, the California Department of Public Health, and all the water board agencies are working in partnership with us to make sure that when the island is transferred, you can rest be assured that the cleanup is done into the allowable standards by the regulators. So everything we are doing in Treasure Island is transparent. We hold public meetings of which the community residents, our stakeholders attend. You can look on our website. We generate information to the public. We believe in exactly what we are doing here, that this is going to be a development that is going to transcend about maybe 10 to 20 years. When it's done, Treasure Island Yaba Buena is the next destination in the Bay Area. We realize that we are strategically located. And so we're not all also only looking at road transportation. Our goal is to try to alleviate the heavy traffic on the Bay Bridge by supplementing that with water transportation. And so we actually are in direct conversation with Tilly Chang and her team to help us to come up with a vibrant uh, plan that will help us to achieve that. Envision five, 10 years from now. You should be able to come out of Treasure Act from the East Bay by bypassing the Bay Bridge. You should be able to travel from anywhere in the Bay Area. We are here. We are centrally located. And we are going to make sure that this development is one of the finest in the country. What do we have in plan? We have in plan, as some of the speakers said before, almost 10,000 residents will be, busy, will be living here. We're all going to have a point of destination, about three hotels, about almost 250,000 square feet of retail places, and also sustainable development. So this is the plan that's, that Treasure Island and Yerba Buena have in our vision. So before any further ado, I'm just here today and I thank Carl Tran and I'm also happy that all of the agencies are going to work with us. Are we going to have challenges? Absolutely, yes. Any great development at any given point will have challenges. However, when you look at the partner that we already have, we have Caltrans, we have members of the engineering community, we also have the DBE. One of the things that we accentuate is that diversity is a key to doing anything. When I worked on the, when I came in here earlier this morning, what did I see? I see the faces that represent San Francisco. That's what we're going to be pushing to make sure that this development is about everyone getting their fair share, getting the opportunity to showcase their businesses, their skills, and the expertise all together. The point of destination is basically where we are striving to. So I'm honored to be standing here today in the presence of every one of you. And congratulations to the folks that brought us here. And again, I want to congratulate the team that is going to bring us further. Mr. Bob Beck, you have your work cut out for you. And Tilly Chang, we're going to put your feet to the test. And you've already scaled the world. So. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for those extraordinarily kind words on, on my appointment. And I'm, I think Bob and I have our marching orders, and it's been pretty clear, made very clear. So we're very pleased to get that assignment. 
and to help you all deliver this fantastic development project. Our next speaker really needs no introduction for those who follow transportation or who travel at all in the region. Uh, Caltrans District 4 Director Bijan Sartipi has been a friend and partner of our Transportation Authority for many years. And while I've admired him as a transportation leader for some time as a deputy, I've now had the pleasure of getting to know him better over the past few months in my new role as executive director, um, not only on this project, but on various other partnerships, including, of course, our stunning Presidio Parkway project. Bijan and his team at District 4 have been true partners with us on this project as well, helping to secure state and federal funding for the project and streamlining all the various processes that it takes to deliver a project like this, including the environmental review process um, under the new delegated authority for NEPA and FHWA. So thank you, Melanie Brandt, for that work as well. Please join me, of course, in welcoming now our 27-year veteran of Caltrans and District 4 Director Bijan Sartipi. Thank you, Tilly. Good morning, it's really a pleasure to be here today uh, as we start the construction of a project that will not only improve safety, operation, connectivity, but access to the Treasure Island. We're all very proud of the bridge that you see behind us, the world-class bridge that we have, and we're also proud of this project that will put a world-class brand new connection to the Treasure Island. Although this ramp project was developed independent of the Bay Bridge project, its success is owned, owed to the great partnership, coordination, collaboration between Caltrans and all of the work that our toll bridge program staff have done uh, on the island, the Transportation Authority, MTC, CTC, uh, TIDA, and also the Federal Highway Administration. These ramps, along with the retrofit of the west side ramps, will support the future development plans that was just mentioned. Uh, all of that uh, community that's going to be developed here uh, is the goal of this region, a sustainable transportation system with housing uh, and a livable place uh, for all people in Bay Area. We know very well that the ramps that we have in place today do not address and cannot handle the peak time traffic that is projected for 2035 after that development is in place. I'm pleased uh, to be part of uh, uh, this project and uh, I am pleased the, uh, of the work that our staff has done uh, working together uh, with uh, the rest of the uh, partners to deliver this project. But we owe it to the foresight of the voters who passed Proposition 1B bond in 2006, and with that, it provided the $9 million matching fund that leveraged $78 million of federal funds uh, with the $10 million of the TIDA money that made this project fully funded. To date, more than 17 billion in Proposition 1B funds have been put uh, statewide to work. This is an investment into our trans transportation infrastructure. This project is an example of how a strong partnership can be successful, and at the end of the day, the taxpayers reap the benefit of that success. We work very closely with the San Francisco Transportation Authority, uh, and our collective team completed the environmental document in three years. It usually takes four to seven years to complete a project of this magnitude. The team worked very hard to make sure that, um, that we saved the historic building that was threatened, by, uh, uh, threatened with demolition by finding a way to relocate it across the island. The team worked together to arrange transfer of some of the lady, uh, Navy land, uh, their real estate, for this project. And due to the collaboration and the cooperation, this project is a starting on a schedule. Before I close, let me recognize Melanie Brent, our Deputy Director for Environmental, and his staff for the hard work that they did to make sure that this project is delivered. Sylvia Fong from our Office of uh, Local Assistant and, and her team, uh, Chin and Jimmy are also here in the audience. I want to thank them. Jack Shaw and Ken Tripsra from our Torbridge program, Bob Zandipur, Steve Hossabus from Design, Julie McDaniel and uh, Mark Schindler from our right of way and utilities uh, worked very hard to make sure that this project stays on a, on a schedule. Deanna Wilczek and, and Raj from our construction office also made sure that, uh, will make sure that this project uh, is oversighted and, uh, and gets through construction. I want to have a special thanks for Lee Saga uh, of the Transportation Authority, Eric Cordoba, and also uh, my chief deputy director, uh, Dan McEnany, the three of them got together. They worked very hard to make sure that this project is delivered. 
Partnership starts at the top, and I am grateful and lucky to have a partner like Tilly Chiang, uh, uh, the executive director of the Transportation Authority, who sets the goal of collaboration right at top for the team to follow. I want to thank the California Highway Patrol uh, for protecting uh, our construction workers and continuing to keep our roadways safe for the traveling public. I want to thank the contractor, um, Golden State Bridge, uh, who will make sure that this project is done safely and it is on a schedule. And I want to thank him for incorporating a small businesses, disadvantaged businesses, into their work. It is important uh, to be inclusive uh, when we do this type of work. More than anything, uh, I would like to ask the motorists to please continue to be patient and drive past construction zone, slow for the cone zone, uh, and, and uh, make sure that if you see a Caltrans truck with flashing light, if you can pull to the, to the lane uh, and give them some more room, uh, please do so, so that we can get this project done safely, safely. It could save a life, and that life could be yours. I want to congratulate everyone, and thank you for including us into your program. Thank you very much, Bijan. We are very grateful to have your leadership and collaboration on this and many other critical projects to keep our economy moving forward in San Francisco and in the Bay Area as a whole. Um, as many of you know, the Transportation Authority is committed to the full and active participation of small and disadvantaged businesses in our projects. DBE and SBE firms themselves are a valuable connection to the future in terms of project delivery and community-based economic development. As I mentioned earlier at bid opening, we were very happy to see that Golden State Bridge not only had met the goal but had exceeded it in their bid with a 13.8% participation. Moreover, it is a great team built on long-standing prior business relationships such as the ones cultivated by Brian Stoppard um, that really speak to the integrity of the folks at the top and, and speaking volumes to how they do business. Uh, one of our Golden State Bridge team members is Empire Engineering and Construction. This is a construction management and strategic planning firm owned by Mr. Clifford Birch. Empire Engineering is based here in San Francisco and specializes in grading, excavating, underground utilities, concrete, and flat work, among other areas of expertise. I'm delighted he could join us today, so please join me in welcoming one of our homegrown DBE leaders, Mr. Cliff Birch. Thank you very much, Ms. Chang, for your wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. It is an honor and a privilege to be here this morning in front of all of you, and a greater honor to be working on the YBI Ramps project. Loosen up, everybody. It's time you should bring it up. Thank you. Come on now. The theme today is about connection and the importance of connecting the past to the future, from the Bay Bridge to the Willie Brown Bridge through this outstanding project. Let me share with you today a number of connections that Empire has because it will give you a brief overview of what it takes for a small business to make a great impact on this outstanding project. We are connected to the City of San Francisco as a certified LBE firm. We are connected to Caltrans as an underutilized disadvantaged business. We are connected to the State of California as a small minority business enterprise. And we are connected to the federal government as an 8A and hub zone business. We are connected to a number of licensing contracting agencies as an A, B, C8, and a D63 contractor. These many different certifications has allowed Empire to position ourselves for every opportunity that arises. We have the honor of working in on over 150 projects within San Francisco and the greater Bay Area. I am honored and privileged to be joined here today by some of my colleagues in the small and DBE business industry on this particular project. Such outstanding people as Julie Berry of Calcon Pumping, Chris Williams of CJC Trucking, Steve Powell from Biomass, and Karen Wallenberg of Rupert Construction Supply, and many other small businesses making a big impact. We are connected to this project because the, F, the SFCTA demonstrated this commitment to the B DBE program. They showed all other transportation agencies in California, as well as the Greater Bay Area, that they were not going to stand for large contractors submitting bids that did not meet the DBE requirement. They've proven that they understand that, as employers in San Francisco and the Bay Area, that our employees 
of small disadvantaged businesses and underutilized businesses are paying, paying, paying their mortgages, sending our children to school, and paying our taxes, which is helping fuel the infrastructure of the Bay Area. Through this action, the SFCTA and its commissioners show they are much more than talking the talk, but walking the walk. And for this, I commend you. Thank you. They are about courage and commitment, just like us, the small businesses, and as well as Golden State Bridge contractor. I would like to highlight one more very important connection to why I am standing here before you today. That connection is that I formed and now friendship with a remarkable person named Brian Stopper, who now works for Golden State Bridge. Several years ago, Brian and I participated in a construction mentor protege program that Caltrans and the AGC of the Bay Area introduced. Through this program, I became the protege of Brian Stopper while he was the president of a construction firm in Walnut Creek. For over two years, Brian and I, Brian mentored me uh, everything in business establishment, business development skills, estimating, and even gifting me with my first estimating software, Bid to Win. This increased our revenue over 30% to and, and to improving our back general office accounting systems as well as our project management team. There isn't a phase of our business that Brian didn't positively make an impact. It was because of this mentorship that my company has grown and continue to employ in the ranks of San Francisco and continue to, successful, be, continue to be successful. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, successful and continue to be successful within the San Francisco Greater Bay Area. Give it up for Brian. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Brian. I'm about to cry. Uh, in closing, I would like to thank uh, Brijan Sertipi for understanding and having a vision on how important the mentor-protege program and relationships are to small disadvantaged business and underutilized firms like myself. For making it possible to connect with Brian Stopper, I am forever grateful. Thank you. There couldn't be a clear demonstration of building connections to the future than through my company relationships with the SFCTA. Caltrans and, of course, Golden State Bridge contractors on our presence on this project. I, co I, I commit to the pro project partners on the YBI Bridge project, and I'm sure that the DBEs and SBE colleagues of mine will join me in saying that we will deliver, that we will deliver, that we will deliver a world-class product, and we look forward to building many more connections to the future And we move for as we move forward. May God continue to bless each and every one of you, and much success to the small businesses. Thank you very much. Incredible. Chris, you're here and thank you, Chris. That's incredible. It is truly inspiring to have an outstanding DBE entrepreneur like you on this project. Thank you so much for your leadership. Yes, well, everyone, on that high note, that just about concludes our program today. I certainly want to thank each of you for coming. I would like to thank all of the folks who made this event possible. Our Deputy Director for Capital Projects, Lee Saga, and our Project Manager, Eric Cordoba, the entire team at Pendergast, including Barbary Coast Consulting and PB and all the other folks who really helped, all the Golden State Bridge folks and the Empire Engineering and other DBE folks for helping us produce this wonderful event. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. We'll see you at the ribbon cutting. <laughs> Thanks again for coming.